Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the fifth installment of the MSC Group's webinar series 2022. My name is Denise Reichwein Lees, Director of Sales with MSC Cruises, and we are happy that you're here today. We are going to be talking all things onboard functions and requests. So we're going to take you through a deep dive of how all of this works, what you need to be doing, when you need to be doing it, and get you uh, ready to go ahead and move forward with the next phase of your group booking. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about what we're going to review. We're going to have you leave today with a full understanding of when it's appropriate to request onboard functions, how the actual availability works for uh, the venues and the spaces on board uh, and, and the things to kind of take into consideration. Uh, you're going to learn how to find the right space, how to find which venue is appropriate for your group's needs and size. Uh, also, we're going to talk about the options of uh, various services, food and beverage, things along those lines. Take you through the actual um, requesting process for functions and meeting space, as well as your dining room uh, request for your group. And then uh, look at the timeline, the whole workflow of how this all comes together. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So the most important thing for you to take into consideration is the availability um, and, and also the limitations too, right, uh, for venues and things on board. So the number one thing I'm going to tell each of you is it's always best to be as flexible as possible with your request and always remember to consider that we have multiple groups on board and, and our number one priority is going to always be accommodating everyone's needs, right? So it's, it's like a big puzzle. You know, we, we have to kind of make sure all the pieces are fitting right for everybody. We, we, you know, oftentimes there can be scheduling conflicts and, and we must always remember that we have to consider the needs of all of our guests on board and, and not just those that are in groups, right? So we, we have to kind of make it work for everybody. And a lot of times that comes down to normally scheduled functions and events that are going on board. And this is kind of why I have this image of the daily program here. Um, it's important to also point out that not every single sailing has the exact same daily program for the most part, right? The, 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 the core programming uh, remains the same, but a lot of times there's little things that, that do change from itinerary to itinerary uh, and, and also sailing to sailing. So when, when, you know, when, when looking to create your onboard schedule of events and needs for your groups, you know, and, and I always suggest that you sit down and, and really kind of work through that, not only um, once a group is blocked, but sometimes even before a group is blocked, right? So that you can determine, am I choosing the right ship, you know, in, in the fleet for, for this group's needs? You know, is it going to have what, you know, what you need? But I'm going to make a suggestion that you always, you know, once you've made that determination that yes, you have the right ship and, and all of that, but maybe, you know, and this has always worked well for me, is having a first and a second choice for your venue locations, right? So having that kind of plan B backup, where when you send in your request to us, if you list these, you know, first and second choice locations, um, and even first and second choice on timing, right? The more flexible you remain in this, the better chances you're gonna have with getting what you need for your group. And it allows us also to cut down on the amount of time and the back and forth with the shipboard team in getting those venues and that space confirmed for you. So it really kind of cuts to the chase to say, I'd really like this location, but you know, I'll, I, I can also use this one if need be as a backup. So, you know, we need to keep that in mind. Another thing, you know, we do understand that there are times or there are pieces of business that really do require 
the confirmation of onboard space well in advance, right? It's a condition of sale, if you will. And while we are certainly you know, willing to take that an, into consideration, we also need to understand that, you know, let's say that you have a group that you've said absolutely positively, you know, I have to have this space at this time on this date in order for me to win this piece of business. You know, sometimes a much larger group might come along and, and that venue that you've chosen, which might be, you know, big enough to handle that group, we may have to look to, to move some things around a little bit. But at the end of the day, we're going to always do everything possible to deliver on every single thing that is needed for the groups on board. That's the, the most important piece of, you know, the underlying message here. So when is it appropriate, right? We, we need to first remind you that the average group really may not need function space, right? So, so the, the, you know, the typical family and friends type groups or, or groups that, you know, are just looking to have a get together, but not necessarily, it's not involving food and beverage or other services, right? So let's first make a point of understanding when it really makes sense to, to put in a request for that space. So, you know, that comes down to, you know, the type of group that it is, an affinity group, you know, family and friends, everybody knows each other. They're just looking to kind of, you know, hey, let's all meet up before dinner and have some cocktails. You know, that's something that's a little different. That's something that could be communicated, you know, from the group leader amongst the group members to just simply say, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, on the on the sail away day, we're going to get together, you know, in in the uh, black and white lounge, you know, on Davina, for example, and and you know we're gonna we're gonna you know do our sale away there but really no food and beverages needed you know they might all have a beverage package nothing you know from the ship perspective is needed so that that's not really necessary to request you know you know a meetup if you will the, the cases where it's definitely needed right these are going to basically be receptions or gatherings that would need food and beverage or additional services like you know AV, microphone, you know, presentation, you know, maybe there's, you know, cocktails or there's, um, you know, hot and cold hors d'oeuvres, things like that. Maybe it's a, an actual meeting or a presentation. Uh, it might be a performance group, right? They're going to, they want to perform maybe and they're going to use the, the main show lounge or something, right? Weddings, valorous, any of these types of, of functions, right? They're going to need that space, right? Because they have food and beverage or other services that are required from the ship. So I think that's pretty clear in, in understanding when we need to, uh, you know, have space secured. So now that we know it's appropriate to request that space, it's important to find the right space, right? So this is a great screen for you to screenshot. Um, this shows you the path on MSC Book under the marketing um, drop down, under the sales tools section, you're going to find our technical sheets. There is a technical sheet for every single ship in our fleet. And this is going to allow you to see the various options and locations and sizing that are available. So everything from the square footage to the capacities to, you know, whether it's, um, you know, a dance floor or a theater, whatever the case may be. This is where you're going to find that. And in, a, in just a second, I'm going to show you a little bit closer what those look like. But another point that I want to touch on here are the lounge types. It's very important to understand the difference between a walkthrough lounge and a private lounge. So a walkthrough lounge is one that basically we have to leave it open so that guests can make their way through that lounge because they can't get to a certain part of the ship without going through that lounge, hence walkthrough, right? Those lounges can be used for functions. However, they cannot be made private, if you will. Like we cannot block off those entrances to make them private. There are certain lounges that are private because they have one way in and, and, and just the same way back out, right? They're, they're not truly a walkthrough to get from one point to another through that lounge. So, you know, while you could, for example, again, talking about the Davina, the Golden Jazz um, 
a bar and lounge, that is a walkthrough. Now, that's not to say that you can't do a cocktail party there, right? But we cannot make it physically private for you, okay? Um, we could put you in one section of it, but it's not going to be private as in the doors blocked off that no one else can come in, okay? So I think that's pretty clear. Here is a closer look at our technical sheets. So on the previous slide, I showed you the actual page on MSC Book, which showed all the little uh, thumbprints, if you will, or thumbnails uh, for each of the technical sheets. So for example, here on the left-hand side of the screen, you see the one for the Meravia, and there's the, the hyperlink underneath it. If you click on that, that blue MSC Meravia on the website, it's going to open up the full document. Now, these are obviously um, just snippets of it. These are usually, you know, I'm going to say at least 10 pages on average. It covers everything. It shows the deck plan. It shows all these lounges. It shows, you know, Yacht Club if applicable. It shows all different things about the ship. But what I really want to highlight as an example here, and, and this is just one area that I, I grabbed a, a closer snapshot of, you know, these are the conference rooms as an example. These are areas um, that you could use as, as conference space. And it's showing you the actual, you know, stage or dance floor. Uh, in this case, it's showing it as square meters, but um, that can easily be converted into square feet. It shows you the capacity, the number of seats, right? So here we see the Broadway theater seats 985 people. And then of course, it also shows that surface area plus the deck location. Every one of our technical sheets has this type of data and it will really help you. Also, if you look just to the, the above the red circle here to the left, you see the use, right? So there are cases where we, we will give a description as to what that space is actually used for. So that also helps. These are great tools and I encourage you to um, get familiar with them because these will really help you find that right an ideal space for your group and again even that backup space if needed okay so moving on <clears throat> i want to talk a little bit about functions that are related specifically to group amenity points so you know you've got your group blocked maybe there were four points on on the sailing and you're using those towards a cocktail reception so keep in mind that we do have the group amenity menu in the uh, download uh, options for the handouts from today's webinar. And we've had that in our previous ones, but it's also available on MSC Book under the booking dropdown and the groups program page. If you scroll down, we have multiple documents there. And the amenity menu point, excuse me, the amenity points menu is available for there to, you know, there for you all the time. But I wanted to take this one section and blow it up here so we could take a look at this. Remember that when you're blocking your groups and you have points and you're going to use them for a reception, actually for any amenity, they should be designated and chosen at the time you, you have the group contract created, okay? That can be changed, that election can be changed one time prior to final payment. So if you needed to re-swizzle those points, you could, okay? So I'm just highlighting here that it's important to mention that there are minimum requirements for these cocktail parties using the gap points. So it is a minimum of 16 passengers required for these types of receptions. And if cancellations are made outside of the 100% penalty phase for your sailing, it could result in that cocktail party falling below the minimum requirements and loss of the venue space, okay? So it doesn't happen a lot, but I just wanna point that out, that that's definitely a, a, you know, a, a, a situation that could come up. Um, but in a case like this, let's say the four points, they were gonna have the one hour open bar party with hot and cold hors d'oeuvres, and you know, they had met the minimum that would be a time where you would definitely be requesting a venue location for this reception. It's, that's an example. So those receptions, you know, aren't just for, you know, gap points, right? We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the other options now that are available for uh, purchase, right? So other food and beverage options that are available to um, 
to groups, right? These are just a high level list, right? These are not all of them, not only those, but this is a very high level list that we put together for you so that you understand. So for, for parties or receptions, we offer everything from simple champagne toasts, sparkling wine parties, wine and beer parties, our captains and our standard and open bar, those are offered on that group amenity menu that we just we just took a look at. One thing so that you're aware, the captain's party is a select list of cocktails. So they're predetermined uh, cocktail menu. And, and that is the most affordable or, or does cost the least when paying for it out of pocket versus, and also with the points too, right? So it takes the least amount. But you can do, you know, full open bar. And remember, we do these in in 30 minute increments. So it's 30 minutes, one hour, two hour, you know, up from there. So you have those options. We also do sangria parties, champagne parties, soft drink socials, non-alcoholic, um, you know, selection of of receptions, and even coffee breaks uh, that can be added into meetings. Another uh, thing to mention is the culinary enhancements that can go along with some of these. You know, hors d'oeuvres, hot and cold, canapes, hot and cold, cakes, ice cream socials, gelato, pizza parties, kosher meal selections, Danish and sweets that go along with the coffee breaks. Um, and then, of course, not to mention, you know, the stateroom delivery type amenities, um, you know, that you know about bottles of wine, canapes, strawberries, fruit baskets, packages, things of that nature. And then last but certainly not least are the specialty restaurant buyout options that are available for groups. So if you had a group that was going and wanted to have the entire restaurant, maybe maybe the, you know, the size of the restaurant suits your group's needs uh, or even falls falls less, uh, falls under those needs, you can buy out that restaurant, you know, for a fee. So keep in mind that all of these things here can be done for additional cost built in, you know, to to your group, and and you know your sales representative can talk to you about how you know how that you know can be done. We can either negotiate it with your contract when you're working on that, or you can add on with our overcharge option, which we can talk uh, more offline when you speak with your representative about the options there. But really, the sky's the limit when I think when it comes to onboard functions and the opportunities associated with food and beverage uh, that can be done. Okay, now let's dive in to what it is um, what's involved with requesting your function space i'm gonna we're gonna go into this form on the next slide in much more detail because obviously it's too hard to see on this slide right now but uh, from a high level perspective right so the groups department is going to send the you know send you uh these this form pre-populated in the top section which we're going to go into in just a second and then these other areas uh that i've bullet pointed here are the areas in which you're gonna be responsible to complete the data and then ultimately provide that to us um, via email, okay? Uh, so let's jump into that so that you understand exactly what's involved. Now for today's purposes, I have outlined each of these sections with a, a different color. Keep in mind the form does not have these colors on them. OK, so it may not be a bad idea for you to do a screenshot of this and maybe take some notes for yourself. Um, but remember, you're going to also get the recording uh, and we do archive them also on MSC book for future uh, viewing. But also in the handouts today, this form is there so you can download that and hold on to it. OK, so starting at the top in the red box, right? This is the area that the group department is going to pre-populate the applicable information for you when they send it over to you. Now, before we go further, I just wanna say this. As you can see right now, I, I just had the seashore there. That's not normally where it goes. It would go in the yellow field. Um, but I do wanna say this. In the download section, as I mentioned, you have that available as a handout that you can save this. You can start to work on this as time is passing, you know, and you're and you're speaking with your group leader and you're organizing things, right? And then you can ultimately um, merge that information when uh, the group department sends over the official form to you. But I just want you to have this 
from the beginning, right? So that you can start to understand the questions that you should be asking and the information that you should be gathering so that you can be prepared. You know, my idea here is that we can be proactive and get you prepared and do all these things well in advance so that you're not scrambling at the last minute. So again, that red section, we're gonna pre-populate all that applicable information and send that over to you. Now, moving to the little green box that's just below the red there, this is the area that you're going to complete with the group or tour leader's name and their booking number, okay? So this way you tell us who is the primary contact on board for the onboard group coordinator and the event coordinator to be uh, corresponding with and, and working with, okay? Moving into that purple box, this has a, a bunch of the yellow lines there, not the bright ones at the top, but more towards the center of the screen. This middle section is where you would list any information related to the following areas. So uh, this is basically important notes or general information regarding the type of group and the activities that uh, they may be having, uh, just a very high level description of what the group is so that we can understand more about what their needs are. So as an example, you might simply say, that this is a um, this is a you know a, a meeting group right this is a, a small a small church organization that's getting together and they have an annual meeting and you know they're going to have their meeting on board you know this particular sailing you know it's like a retreat of sorts right just again free flow information that you can tell us a little bit more about the group the next line down is the hospitality desk so we do provide um, a skirted table and chairs along with a specific location that the group can have a hospitality desk on board. And that may be a place, you know, that maybe they're there daily, maybe only for a few hours for the first day to welcome their guests on board to simply say, hey, stop by to see us, maybe pick up a hospitality bag or whatever collateral and materials maybe that they want to bring and distribute to uh, their attendees, their group members. So we would specifically need to know, you know, what are the hours, what days, just again, basic information so that we know what the needs are. The next uh, two lines pertain specifically to our daily program and, and the opportunity to personalize um, a program. So it's not available on all ships. That's the first thing I need to make mention of. However, if you are sailing on on one of the newer ships that we you know that we're offering this on you could personalize that program and 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 put a company's logo on it you know and and that would be distributed to those you know those staterooms specifically that are part of the group uh there's also you know an option for you know a specific sentence like you know well you know welcome aboard you know xyz travel group or or whatever the case may be so there's there's opportunity for personalization um, and and if that's something that is of interest we can definitely do that then of course we have stateroom uh you know deliveries so keep in mind that maybe this group is is doing a pillow gift every night you know there are a lot of groups that that do that you know maybe they're going to be you know having something delivered to the room whether it's like i said you know chocolate covered strawberries or or something like that those amenities typically are not going to be done in this area. This is this is specific to items that are not necessarily um, food and beverage related, but more along the lines of maybe items that they brought on board for distribution. So again, there are potential fees involved with cabin deliveries, um, but it depends on what we're dealing with uh, with that specific group, which then takes us down to the next box which is the material embarkation information so as an example i've already mentioned a few things here like hospitality bags printed material cabin deliveries right so maybe the group is bringing you know all of these materials with them we need to know exactly what is being onloaded okay maybe it's a performance group maybe they're bringing a bunch of of you know uh, instruments on board or whatever the case may be anything that's being onloaded to the ship we need to know what they are approximately you know weight size of boxes is it's going to be crates is it going to be pallets 
whatever the case may be. The reason for this is logistically, we have to arrange for everything on the pier, obviously. And then also there could be uh, ramifications when it comes to customs and, and border control, right? So if things have to then be offloaded after the cruise, for example, all of those instruments from a, from a, a performance group, right? there are customs regulations that have to be abided by. So it's very important that we know as much as we possibly can. And I know this doesn't apply to all groups, right? But I do need to mention it because it is here on the form. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now finally, the orange section at the bottom. And again, this form is, 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 has a lot more lines to it. This was just, I, I wanted to give us a, a, at least a screenshot that we could read. I'm going to go from left to right here in this orange section. This is used to outline the day-to-day -day needs and activities of the group, okay? So um, it's important to remember that in a case like this area, I like to say more is more. <laughs> so uh, the more detail you can give us, the better. So in this case, we have the port, right? So let's just say that it's, uh, you know, the day of, so it's Miami. Let's say they're boarding in Miami. So you're gonna write Miami. The day and the date is the next column. So that would be considered day one and the sailing date, right? So in this case, we'll just say September 6, 2022. Then we have port arrived and departure time. So in this case, they're sailing at 5 p.m. So we would say, you know, 5 p.m. as a departure because they arrived already in the morning. It doesn't matter. But on a port day, right? Not not an actual sailing day, but a port day. Let's say they're pulling into Ocean Key at 8 o'clock in the morning and the ship is sailing at 6 p.m. You could put 8 a.m. dash 6 p.m. here as an example. The next column is the event slash activity. So here's what we would need to know. For example, uh, if this is going to be a reception, you know, a cocktail reception, you know, you would simply put that cocktail reception. Um, and, and in this case, you would say, you know, group amenity points, you know, uh, open bar, you know, hot and cold hors d'oeuvres or whatever. And then, of course, the event start time. So let's just say that it's going to be, you know, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. You would put that in the end in the start time and the end time. Expected attendance. One might think that, you know, you maybe have a group of 65, you're gonna put 65 in here, but let's say that you have different things happening for different people in the group, right? We need to know the expected attendance for that particular event. Again, it depends on how complex your, your onboard um, program is gonna be. You know, maybe you have breakout sessions, maybe you have all, you know, you may have a general session, then you may have breakout sessions, whatever the case may be for the group expected attendance is definitely a requirement for us because then we need to know, right? That that comes down to confirming what lounge makes the most sense size wise. Uh, then we get down to requested location. So this is where my suggestion would be, you could put, you know, number one dash and you could say black and white lounge, you know, number two dash, um, you could put the golden jazz bar. Again, I'm talking about Davina as an example. So that would then say, okay, this is my first choice, but if I can't get that, then we're willing to take this as a backup. Set up location and services needed. That's our next column here. This would be where we would need to know, um, you know, if, if, you know, anything specific is going to be needed. For example, um, a microphone, you know, with stanchion is needed or, you know, a table by the entrance, you know, skirted with two chairs, you know, to distribute, you know, materials, uh, coffee break, you know, uh, you know, table set up to the left of the stage, whatever. Again, more is more, you know, if, if you need any type of, of things like that. Then further to the right, we have the technical and AV requirements. Again, microphone, stanchion, screen, LCD projector, uh, anything along those lines. Or maybe you need a technician there to help you run lights and sound and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's important to mention. Keep in mind, standard AV is complimentary on board our ships. If you need something that is not a standard on board, there would be fees involved, or you could bring that that you know item yourself 
it's important to know that, of course, you know, we have the right, you know, cables to connect things and, and you know, 110 versus 220 voltage, things along those lines with, with currency conversion. Uh, that's very important to understand. So sometimes it's better that, that we supply the things that you need so that we know they're going to work with our systems. Also, for technicians, there are hourly wages involved if they are needed. But you would outline everything that you need for your event or function in that technical AV uh, column. The next column is food and beverage requirements. You know, maybe it's a meeting, you know, coffee break with, um, with sweets. So we know you want Danish and, and, you know, sweets instead of savory items because we do offer savory items also with coffee breaks uh, if desired. You know, maybe you want, you know, American coffee or maybe you you really want, you know, cappuccino, espresso. It just depends on on how elaborate you want that to be as an example. But other examples might be, you know, cake, you know, uh, maybe it's maybe it was a wedding group. You know, they have to have a cake with a cutting table and all that kind of stuff. So food and beverage, you know, is all listed there. Again, more is more detail. The notes and request column, which is the second from the right here, this is a free flow area that again, you could you could put a lot more detail in there to help us understand exactly what the needs are, or maybe there was something else uh, that you know that you needed that there was no other area to put it. For example, I don't know, this is some just an off the wall idea. Maybe you were hosting a scavenger hunt and you needed one of our entertainment staff to help coordinate that or actually host it. Or, or maybe you were gonna do you know, a private bingo type event, things like that. If that's where you would put that in here if it was not fitting into uh, any of the other areas. And then the very far right column is the notes from the shipboard team and the status request. So when we send this over to the shipboard team, they start to work on everything and then they start to send back comments and confirmations and that is where uh, you would find that information. Keep in mind that ideally this form would be completed and sent to us at 30 days prior to sailing. And you would send this over to the MSC groups advocate, excuse me, MSC group, singular group advocates at MSCCruisesUSA.com. Never fear, we're going to show you that address again in just a few minutes. So that's everything on the events form. Now, the other piece that's important when it comes to group is dining room requests. Now we're gonna go into that form as well, but very high level here, I wanna run through a few things. We have created this form where it can be typed into, but oftentimes we do receive forms that are handwritten. If you are not able to type into this form and save your version and email it to us, and you are going to handwrite it, I request that you do as, as much as you can possibly to make sure that that form is legible. Because the last thing we want to have happen is that get passed along to the ship and they can't read your handwriting. Keep in mind that these forms are forwarded over to the shipboard staff exactly the way you send it. None of this is done shoreside when it comes to dining. Those forms are completely sent over to the ship and they handle everything there. So. The form that you're gonna receive from the groups department will automatically have your applicable dining times and your ship and sail date pre-populated. I do want to point out that the seaside class of ships specifically and only, they offer a three seating time option for the dining room. So they have early, mid and late seatings. The rest of the ships all have two, early and late. OK, so it's just the seaside class that do the three and all of these requests so that you are aware when we send them to the ship, they handle everything there. And then all of that information is provided on the day of sailing. It's not we we're, they don't come back to us and say yes, no, whatever. They do everything and it is communicated the day of sailing. OK, a little bit different from maybe what you're familiar with with other brands. Then of course we have the seating priority and I just wanna go through this again before we look at the form so it makes sense. So this is a good one to take a snapshot of. The seating priority area on the form 
speaks specifically to two different types, section and table size. So for section, this is basically when all of your tables will be assigned in the same area of the dining room, but not with specific table assignments, meaning that we're gonna give you, let's say the right hand corner of the dining room, and we're gonna give you enough tables in that area to accommodate the number of people in your group. So basically how this is done is it's assigned as one large travel with, meaning everybody is gonna be seated at those tables specifically. And this works really well for groups that have prepaid gratuities, what we call service charges, and round robin type seating, okay? So they're all gonna be mixed together. It's not specific table assignments. It's just based on the specific section within the dining room. Then we have the option for table size. So for example, you want to specifically seat and assign people at exact tables, okay? With exact travel with, um, you know, cross-referencing. So that would be your option to do table assignments where you would use this form and you could say table number one has six seats at it and these three couples are gonna be seated at table number one. Then it's table number two might be eight top and you have four couples seated there. You'll see when we look at the form what I mean by this. One other area that I wanna talk about is last minute FIT booking. So let's say that your group has been finalized and reduced to sold. Obviously at this point in, in the process, they would be. And now you have bookings maybe that are in FIT that have not been pulled into the group, right? Keep in mind again, I mentioned that these forms are submitted to the ship directly. We don't do anything to them in the, in the shore side office, right? Everything goes directly over to the ship. So if you have last minute FIT bookings that are added, then you must send us an updated dining form to include those new bookings, those new FIT bookings and those guests. So that's very important to mention that that needs to occur. And then last but not least, again, the dining forms should be received 30 days prior to sailing. Um, this is the email address, MSC Groups Advocates at msccruisesusa.com. It's our standard groups department email address. And um, that form, by the way, is also in the downloads, the handouts available on today's um, webinar. Now, at the very bottom, I have a note here because oftentimes people ask about, well, what about special dietary needs or allergies? This actually is communicated to us on the special needs form, not the dining room form, okay? I know that oftentimes we, we feel the need to, to put it there, um, but we do specifically, uh, our special needs forms are coordinated with the staff on board for the entire voyage and, and not based on their actual dining assignments. So let's take a look at the form. <clears throat> so this is what the actual form looks like. Uh, so you'll notice here, uh, we will pre-populate in the top right-hand corner, agency group ID and your agency ID. And then again, under the seating, we will pre-populate what is specific to your voyage here. This is in the top, uh, sorry, not the top right-hand corner, but below that, um, that second section there in the circle. Over here on the left, we will obviously want you to provide us with the group leader cabin number and booking number again. And this is where we talk about that seating priority. Remember, by section and by table size, remember, we talked about section is everybody's in the same area, but not specific tables, and then by table size. So you're gonna tell us which of those this is being done by, okay? Moving further down on the lower part of the screen, left to right, I'm gonna go again column-wise. You have the group ID, so it's gonna be the same group ID for everybody, obviously. The booking number, so that would be the booking number within the group, but if you have those FIT bookings, you're gonna put their booking number and leave the group ID box blank, okay? Their category, this is important to us for, for many reasons. Remember, we do have Aria, which has their own dining room. We do have Yacht Club, which has their own dining room. 
So remember that if you are having guests that are booked in those areas, they, they are going to be seated in different areas. They're not going to be in the same dining room. Okay. Uh, it's very rare that we have to bring yacht club guests uh, into the main dining area with our Fantastica and Bella um, category, um, you know, guests. Usually it's Arias in their own dining room with their flexible dining and yacht clubs in their own area. So this is why category is important. Cabin number, of course, remember, we do everything on board based by cabin number. You know, most of the, the booking number stuff on, on our side is shore side, but really a lot of things are based on cabin number. But we do always ask that the booking number is included here. So we have it as a backup um, to, to look things up in the system. Last name of the guest, first name of the guest, and then what seating time is it that they wanted? One, two, or three, if applicable, again, seaside class ships only for that third seating being late, okay? So usually it's gonna be first or second being early and late. And then table size, again, if you're going based on uh, table size, you would put here, you know, maybe it's a two, a four, or a six, an eight for the table size. And then ultimately table number. This table number is not the table number in the dining room. This is the table number you're assigning in your, in your sheet. So for example, table number one could be a six top and have three couples. Table number two could be an eight top and have four couples. So you start to create your table numbers that way so that you can stay organized with who's sitting with who. Hopefully that makes sense. Last but not least, I want to show what the actual workflow looks like so that you understand the process. So basically when the group final payment date arrives, the group is reduced to sold and we begin finalization from a finance perspective, okay? Now, 30 days prior is when we expect to push out forms to you for both function and dining. Now, remember, we've given you these as an advance so that you can start to get organized prior to that timeline and you can turn them around quicker this way. And then you can send them straight away back to us 30 days prior to sailing. If you send them to us sooner, okay, considering the, the size of our team and the number of groups we have sailing. I don't want to say that they could get misplaced, but I also don't want you to have to send them multiple times, okay? Or you have things that change and now you're sending them a second and a third time, right? So by 30 days, you should have a pretty good sense as to, to what the needs are for the group. You would then send those forms over to us, okay? We then, the shoreside team, works with shipboard on the functions, passing over the dining forms and all of that. And then two to three weeks prior to sailing, the confirmation comes back to you on the function space. Remember the dining uh, information is provided at the uh, day of sailing and um, that's the workflow. That's basically how everything uh, pans out. So in a nutshell, that's everything related to onboard functions and for joining us. Uh, we hope that these sessions are helpful. We know it's a lot of information. Again, please reach out to your sales representative uh, so that we can help you navigate the waters of booking groups with MSC. And we hope you have a great day. And don't forget, join us next week. Take care. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye.